I will draw a box here. So YC and YP could be related to each other through this box. Hello guys, I hope you're doing great. As we discussed in the previous video that the linear differential equations have a particular type which is called separable equations and these are equations which are easy to solve using integration. The reason behind that was that we were able to separate out or collect all the functions based on variable x and all the functions based on variable y separately and we were able to separately integrate both of both or even multiple of those uh, variables if there are those variables in an equation but now we are going to go a step further and look at some equations which are not separable and we're not able to use direct integration but before we move on subscribe to the channel to stay connected and click the bell icon for notifications again let me first mention that these are linear ordinary first order differential equations which are not separable and one thing i also need to mention here is that we are going to see different types of equations all of these equations have been put into different categories the reason is that we have a separate method to solve each of these equations so it's not the case that we are able to have one method for all the differential equations of like order one like the first order linear differential equations there is not a single method that exists for all of these types of equations they can be different in nature so we have different methods for them so the first method that we are looking at is for a specific type of differential equations these equations if written in a uh, in a standard form that we call a standard form uh, may look like uh, this so there are two standard forms the first standard form so a first order ode of the form a0 dy by dx where a0 is a function of x plus a1 which is a function of x dy by dx which we have been looking earlier at as y prime plus plus a0 which is again a function of x y equal to g of x right so these are specific types of differential equations which are not separable so it's not possible to you know separate these functions out uh, unless some of the coefficients uh, become some of the functions or the coefficients become zero or one until that happens it's not possible for us to separate these equations to functions of x and y alone so an example of this differential equation could be x square dy by dx plus x y equal to g of x and let me even put here cos x another example could be 5 dy by dx plus 6y equal to 7 right so here you can see that all the coefficients like a1 a0 which were uh, i am uh, calling coefficients of differential equation terms and the function g of x all of these are function of x so even 7 uh, even though there is no x present here it can still be considered as a function of x so where x is equal to 1 and now so you may see that in all of the, these differential equations there is one thing common there's a plus sign in both of these there is a dy by dx in both of these there's a y in both of these and there's an equal sign and the thing that and the thing that changes sometimes or most of the time are these things right so these things could be anything based on as long as they uh, fulfill the criteria that they are function of x so that is the only criteria that is imposed on these things the blue things and the orange things are always going to be there so it doesn't really mean that any equation that doesn't exactly look like this may not be this but let me give you another example in which you have like for example you were given with e to the power x dy by dx equal to 3x minus 2y so in this equation you you readily see that if i take this term to the left hand side it becomes very sim similar to this format or this format right so you should uh, see to it whether you are able to change the form or how a diff an equation looks like into form which is which we are calling a standard uh, a preliminary standard form so once we are given with and uh, for sake of brevity i'm going to uh, use a1 instead of a1 of x and a0 instead of a0 of x so they are still uh, you know functions of x and instead of dy by dx i'm using y prime so this is the form 
of uh, differential equation that we need for the following method and the second thing is that we convert this standard form into another standard form which is that we are going to use in the development of this method that we are going to look at but before we do that we i need to mention uh, some definitions the first definition is what is a homogeneous equation homogeneous differential equation is an equation if written in this form if g of x becomes zero then that equation is known as homogeneous differential equation so an equation of this form a1 y prime plus a0 y equal to zero is a homogeneous differential equation so obviously there should be a counterpart to this and that would be that if this right hand term is not zero that is that it is g of x then that equation would not be homogeneous it would be non-homogeneous differential equation so we say that uh, this equation is non-homogeneous so this is uh, just a, a definition that i needed to mention and the standard form for this particular method of linear equations the standard form is that you divide all of this equation by a of a1 right so if I divide all of this equation by a1, what am I going, uh, what will I be left with? I will be left with a 1 over here and all of these coefficients are going to be changed. So let's, let's do that and see what happens if I do that. So I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to divide it with a1. So what am I going to get? I'm going to get a1 divided by a1 y prime plus a0 divided by a1y equal to g of x divided by a1. So obviously this is going to become 1. So we get y prime plus. Now I'm going to change the name of this factor to p of x and I'm going to rename all of this as f of x. That leads me to this equation p of x y equal to f of x. So now this is our standard form which we require to uh, go further with this method that we are about to develop. Right. So the method goes something like this that we first of all identify the different types of solutions that we want from this equation uh, and that is again a new thing for you and which is that one differential equation will have multiple solutions and one uh, flavor of this uh, concept you saw during direction fields where we saw that uh, uh, an equation a differential equation could be plotted for different values of constant of integration and all of that co collective plot was called the general solution and inside that uh, in, uh, in out of all of those lines one particular line was called a particular solution so you can say that one differential equation can have multiple solutions similarly uh, this equation will have two solutions the first solution will be first solution is called the complementary solution which is the solution of the what we called what we call the associated differential the associated homogeneous differential equation of this equation of this non non homogeneous differential equation so the in other words simply speaking uh, the associated homogeneous differential equation of this equation would be the equation in which f of x is equal to zero now you could be asking that we were given with an f of x there was an f of x present there where would we get the homogeneous equation the so the answer to that is you simply make f of x zero you force it to become zero so we say that the uh, solution the complementary solution is the solution of this equation y prime plus p of x y equal to zero and for those of you who uh, have uh, you know have seen the separable equations uh, video they would know that this equation which is y prime plus p of x y equal to zero is a separable equation how let's see how it is so i'm writing again y prime as dy by dx and i'm taking and i'm taking the p of x thing to the other side and now i am going to rearrange these things a bit so i get 1 over y dy equal to minus p of x dx so this homogeneous differential equation is you know ready to be solved so let's take integration on both sides 
So I'm going to take integration on both sides. So on the left hand side I get natural log of y and on the right hand side I won't be able to take the integration of this part because I don't know what p of x is. p of x could be a log function, a constant, a polynomial or it could be uh, an exponent. It could be anything, a function of x or even a trigonometric function. So I'm simply going to leave that like that, leave it like that. So minus p of x dx and further what I can do is as I said earlier that we want the solutions in terms of y and on the left hand side we don't have a y we have a natural log of y so let me take make all of this equation a power of e so I get on the left hand side e to the power natural log of y equal to e to the power minus integral p of x dx right so uh, again if you are confused about this step please go to the previous video and watch it I explained this part uh, in more detail uh, in that video so the left hand side reduces to y and the right hand side cannot be further solved the reason reason is that we don't know what p of x is yet right so as long as p of x is uh, unknown we won't be able to find uh, the integral on the right hand side since we have done integration so as soon as we are done taking taking the integration we should include a constant of integration so there will be a constant of integration here there will be so we include a constant of integration here and it is uh, it can be seen over here by you know because the power was being added together we can break it as uh, the product of uh, exponent and uh, then this the power of uh, a known uh, when an arbitrary constant becomes a power of a known constant it can it still remains an arbitrary constant so uh, here we have it and uh, this is the final solution just we did in the last video so if you don't understand this fully you can go back and watch that video and uh, then what would be the complete solution of this equation that would be the sum of complementary solution and the particular solution complementary solution and by any any solution by definition is a solution which satisfies the differential equation uh, which means that if we substitute that uh, solution into the differential equation the left hand side becomes equal to the right hand side we did that in uh, uh, the early lectures of this course so um, substituting yc into the differential equation uh, let me remind you yc was a solution of uh, y prime plus plus p of x y equal to zero yc was the solution of this equation so if I am going to put instead of y a yc the right hand side must become equal to 0 that is by definition. So if we assume that the complementary solution is a valid solution of this uh, homogeneous equation the left hand side should become equal to right hand side which means that substituting yc instead of y would give me a value of 0. Similarly yp is the particular solution of the non-homogeneous solution. So in order to verify that yc plus yp would also be a solution of y I can substitute it into the non-homogeneous equation because we claim that the sum is a solution of the uh, combined complete non-homogeneous equation. So let's do that the non-homogeneous equation was y prime plus p of x y equal to f of x let's substitute this into this so instead of y prime I, I would be writing yc plus yp whole prime yc plus yp whole prime and instead of y I would be writing yc plus yp right equal to f of x now we have assumed that yp is a valid solution of the non-homogeneous equation right so uh, remember that as a, as a side note so distributing this uh, prime into yc and yp I get yc prime plus yp prime plus p of x yc plus p of x yp which is equal to f of x. Now I am going to rearrange these uh, some of these things and I get yc prime plus p of x yc similarly yp of x similarly yp prime plus p of x yp equal to f of x so here you see that we have reached this point where we have got the left hand side of the homogeneous equation with the assumed valid solution which is a complementary solution so all of this must become equal to zero if yc is a 
valid solution which is our assumption in this case and if this assumption is true that yp is a valid solution of the non-homogeneous equation non-homogeneous sh equation should also um, verify this solution and the, uh, and the left hand side should become equal to its right hand side and the right hand side of non-homogeneous equation was f of x and on the right hand side we get this thing so here you can see that left hand side is equal to right hand side and therefore you can make a claim that uh, y equal to yc plus yp is a valid solution of this differential equation so that uh, should be taken as a side note although i i think that this is uh, this has gone uh, quite in detail but uh, that is still a side note so we are going back to this part that we have calculated the uh, complementary solution for the non homogeneous equation now what we try to do is we try to find the value of the particular solution now an interesting thing here we in most of the cases in the uh, solutions in the future to come what we are going to do we are going to use something that is called uh, variation of parameters 